Hello and welcome to What The Faux Travel Podcast with Nick and Amy. This is series four, episode eight, and this one is all about Ecuador. Oi, oi. Thanks for joining us, guys. Good to have you again as we talk about Ecuador. We have an interesting where are we now catch up for you. Where are we now, Amy? We're home. We're in <laughs> England and it's absolutely freezing and it's raining a lot. That's because we're primarily from the south of England, southeast. Where it's always nice and sunny. Yeah, it, it actually is really sunny. So when people are like, oh, you live in England, it's really rainy. It's like, no, it's not actually. Get your geography right. Not all of England is like that. But we're at the north at the moment, staying with Nick's mum for a couple of weeks because we've just got back from travelling and we have nowhere to live. So we're just staying here for a couple of weeks. And yeah, it's so rainy, freezing and windy and it's making our travel one lust depression so much greater. We're in Burnley in Lancashire <laughs> which it's not all bad up here actually I quite like it but yeah even people from Burnley admit the weather sucks. In this episode all about Ecuador we are going to be doing game show facts and language lessons with Amy but this time it's with Darwin and it will be of an indigenous language called Quechua we will be talking about the different places that we visited around Ecuador, which is Joaquillas, Quiaquil, Ayampe, Cuenca, Baños de Agua Santa, Tena, Misahuayi, Quito, La Tacunga, Quilotoa, and oh, that's about it for the places that we went to. But we're also going to be talking about the food, Ornado, Yapingacho, the coast, the highlands, the mountains, the Amazon rainforest, budget as well because our budget actually went lower this time in Ecuador because it's so cheap. We're going to be talking about adrenaline filled activities that you can do in Banos de Agua Santa, if Quito is a safe place or not and if you should visit and also Mitad del Mundo which is where the equator is so we'll be telling you about that and finally our game for this month is the Capital City Equator game. So today no shout outs we're going to go Straight in, thick and fast, as Nick likes to say. <laughs> you always say that on the podcast. I used to. Thick and fast. I've moved on now. Keep up. Uh, right, let's go on to game show facts. Ecuador means equator in Spanish. The heartland of a series of Andean native civilizations. Ecuador was taken over by the Inca Empire in the 15th century and then the Spanish conquerors a century later. Ecuador won independence from Spain in the early 19th century. Traditionally a farming country, Ecuador's economy was transformed after the 1960s by the growth of industry and the discovery of oil. There was rapid growth and progress in health, education and housing. The population is around 16 million and the capital city is Quito, the highest altitude capital city in the world. The major language is Spanish, although native languages are spoken such as Quichua. Ecuador has many geographical zones, including the Andean peaks, tropical rainforests and a thousand kilometers off the coast, the volcanic Galapagos Islands, home to the animals and birds whose evolutionary adaptations shaped Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. The president, Lenin Moreno, is the first wheelchair user to become Ecuador's leader and one of the few in the world ever to serve as president. Ecuador is the closest country to space, not Mount Everest in Nepal. The reason has to do with the fact that the Earth is not a perfect sphere. The equator is closer to space and farther from the center of the Earth than anywhere else. Mount Chimborazo in Ecuador is actually one and a half miles higher than Everest. That is mental, isn't it? That, that's closer to space than Mount Everest. So if someone says to you, highest mountain is Mount Everest, you can say, well, actually, it's not. <laughs> From sea level, it is, yes. <laughs> you have to go on the technicalities of whatever quiz you're doing, yeah? And you'll just sound like a geek, so maybe just say Mount Everest. It's due to the equatorial bulge. So, well, because the equatorial bulge, uh, Everest, uh, Ever Everest is not the highest. <laughs> Amazing, right? I like the name of that, equatorial bulge. Anyway, let's move on to language lessons. And today we're having language lessons with no, no less than Darwin. That's right. Charles? What's the saying? Nonetheless. 
What? None other than? Yeah. Anyway, let's move on to language lessons. And today's episode of language lessons is with no... What? <laughs> None other than... Yeah. Today's language lessons is with no other... <laughs> <laughs> None other than <laughs> no other. I can't say it. None other than. I feel like there's too many thans. <laughs> <laughs> Just say, can you believe it? It's with Charles. <laughs> can you believe it? Language lessons today is with none other than, than... <laughs> Charles Darwin. <laughs> I've, this has probably been cut, but it just took Amy like 15 takes to say that and she still hasn't said it right, but we've got to move on. Yes, not Charles Darwin, but a local but Darwin. a local Amazonian Quechua man called Darwin who was named after England's very own Charles Darwin. Yeah, so we thought let's not do Spanish in this episode because we've done a lot of South America. A lot of our language lessons are Spanish and you're probably fluent by now listening to all of our episodes. So let's go native. The Quechua people are native to South America, living in the Andean highlands and Amazon rainforest from Ecuador, but they're also in Bolivia. And while we're in the Ecuadorian Amazon, which we will talk about later, that's coming, so stay tuned, we met Darwin, a native man working at our hostel. We chat to him along with the help of manager Isabel. We asked Darwin how to say hello in Quechua. Hey, punja. Hola. Hola y manaya. Okay, so y manaya is buenos días. Claro, y manaya es como hola. Que hola, o sea, hola okay. y manaya. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Y cómo se dice gracias? Ashka pagracho. They're really long words. <laughs> Ash Ashka pagracho, es que eso es muchas gracias. Sí. Gracias, gracias es, es pagracho o yupaychani. Yupaychani. Wow. ¿Y es similar que otra lengua o es solo, cómo se dice, indigenous? Yupaychani is indigenous. Ashka pagracho is like... Is is new, <laughs> yes. Uh, they uh, have like ten years saying Ashka Pagracho. I don't know why, but it's new. Uh, Yupaychani es 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 una palabra eh, actualizada. Es por decir utilizan en la sierra y como aquí, mientras que Ashka Pagracho es la propia de aquí palabra de aquí. It's mixed with the Highlands Quechua. Oh, so there's two different Quechua yes. languages. Uh -huh. Right, yes. okay. So how do you say adios or hasta luego? Calla gama, chupunja gama. Oh my god, I can't even repeat that. <laughs> Otra vez? Calla gama. Calla gama. Chupunja gama. Chupunja gama. Hasta mañana. Wow, that's just hasta um, mañana. Lo siento, sorry. Kishpichiwai. 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 Wow, it's really difficult. Kishpichiwai. Yeah. Kishpichiwai. Lo siento, Kishpichiwai. I'm sorry. ¿Cómo estás? How are you? Imanalia Takanki. Whoa, that was really long. Qué largo. Imanalia Takanki. ¿Cómo estás? Amy, how do you say that? Otra vez, una. Imanalia Takanki. Imanalia Takanki. Ima. Ima. Nalia Naliata Kanki. Kanki. Whoa. <laughs> and I've got one more, which I think's a nice thing to say to someone, but I don't know in Spanish, so Amy can translate. I love you. Uh, te quiero o te amo. Ashka Lyakini. O Kanda Lyakini. O Kanda Lyakini. Kanda Lyakini. Kanda Lyakini. Wow. Should we go for one bad one as well? A bad word. Like oh. a, a swear word. How do you say that in Spanish? Yeah. ¿Tienes uh, palabras malas? ¿Palabras malas en quichua? Como, como puta. O... <laughs> sí, sí, tienen. Yes, no. uh -huh. <laughs> que son las que más tienen. No. <laughs> eh, puta se dice nuspa. 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 Mm. Es como que... Ay, no con nuspa. Es un nuspa. Thank you, Darwin and Isabel. We needed your help because that's a hard one. Like you said, Amy, where do you even start repeating what they were saying? That is tough, isn't it? It's really tough. So Spanish is actually their second language. I think everybody speaks Spanish there. I, I guess unless they're super native and they're, you know, still living in the jungle and haven't come into kind of mainland Ecuador exactly. at all. But yeah, interesting language. I don't. Is that the first time we've done an indigenous language on language lessons? 
yeah, as far as South America goes, that's the first time we've, you know, really shone a light on an indigenous language. And I think it's important to do so. They are what makes South America, South America. And there's more of where that comes from. We will constantly probably throw towards this, but we are going to be doing a mini episode about the Amazon tribes and how their life is affected by oil companies. We're going to do a whole mini episode on that. Oh yeah, really fascinating stuff coming up. Loads of detailed information about the Kichwa people and the Amazon. So we will talk about the Amazon later, but not in proper detail. Yeah, that's another episode. But for now, let's explain Ecuador. So it's actually split into four regions, isn't it? So you've got the coast, you've got the highlands. The Amazon rainforest that we've just spoke about and the Galapagos Islands. Mainland Ecuador's cut into three and it is quite straight vertical lines, really. The coast to the highlands to the Amazon. Yeah, in three different parts. And then obviously Galapagos is way out by itself in the sea. But what this all means is for a small country for South American standards, you got, th- you know, mainland, you got three very different terrains really close together. You could get a bus from the beach, which would take you through the mountains to com- in completely different scenery. And later that day, you're in the Amazon rainforest. So it is amazing. And we will talk more about that. But that is one of the, I think, the best thing about Ecuador. Small country. It's got everything. Yeah. And actually, I'm just going to say it now. If you really want to do South America in some way, but you don't have much time, so you have two to three weeks or even a month, the first place I would tell you to go is Ecuador. As much as I love Brazil, it's too big and you can't get much done in that time. <laughs> I would say if you want to get a real good taste of South America, go to Ecuador. You're not going to have those long, horrible bus overnight journeys. Like Nick just said, you're going to get from one place to the other really quickly, completely different terrain, and you'll be able to sample different parts of what South America offers. You know, you've got the native people, you've got the Amazon, you've got the mountains and you've got the coast. You've got some great beaches along the coast of Ecuador. So yeah, it's a really good... Food as well. It was a mixture, I oh, thought, yeah. of all different South American food. It, it really is. Yeah, if you just want that taste of South America, Ecuador's our number one tip. Definitely. So we're going to give a brief overview of our trip. So we were coming in from Peru and the first border town you'll reach is Joaquilas. After that, we went to, I believe, the second biggest city, which I always struggle to say, Guayaquil. Yeah, so it's spelled spelled G-U-A-Y-A-Q-U-L-I-L. Guayaquil. Guayaquil. Yeah. We think, but then every time we say it, local people are like, no, it's a gear kill. Joya kill. <laughs> it's like, well, I just did a French accent. They're not French. They're definitely Spanish. <laughs> but from there, we went to the coast, one of the little coastal towns called Ayampe. Then we did the epic trip to the Galapagos Islands, which you all heard about. That's done. Yeah, so if you haven't heard that already, we have a whole separate episode just on the Galapagos Islands and it's our favourite place in the world. So I would highly recommend listening to that. Lots of positive reviews and good advice, I hope. Lots of information. It's Lots. like a it's like a science documentary, like a nature, animal, David Attenborough documentary yep. we're basically with our witty banter. Yeah, we're basically Attenborough, but better. The so. cooler version. Actually, there's no one cooler than, <laughs> than Sir David, but you know, we give it a good go. <laughs> So once we were back from Galapagos, we went to a place called Cuenca, which I would say is the most beautiful city in Ecuador. Loved it. Then one of the most fun or the most fun place in Ecuador, we went to Baños de Agua Santa. Then on to Tena, which is just like the inside of the Amazon rainforest. Yeah, and also a town nearby, which is like proper Amazon rainforest, Misahuayi. Misahuayi. Then on to Quito, the capital. Then we went to a place called Latacunga. Which is very close to Kilatoa and you can do the Kilatoa route from there, which we'll be explaining to you. Then we went back to Quito and that was our Ecuadorian adventure finished. Yeah, after that we headed on to Colombia. But that was our brief trip. So if you're looking at a map of Ecuador, it's really hard to kind of get a standard route to go through because it's quite a circular country. There's no straight road through, is there? We're zigzagging all over the place. Yeah, and that's a bit like Mexico, I found as well, which we'll be talking about in one of our next episodes. But yeah, there's no like real route that you can do. I guess it is just in in a loop because you want to hit every main place, really. But so there's not really a guide of how we can tell you to travel through. It depends where you're coming from, where you're going to after, you know, all of that business. But we'll just tell you about the main places that we visited that we thought... uh, 
worth recommending. Yes. <laughs> so the start of our journey, Huaquillas, is that right? The border town. Very close to the border with Peru. So we crossed over. We tried to do a bit of a DIY get across the border day because we thought it'd be cheaper. But in the end, we wished that we just got a bus from Quito to like, for example, Cuenca in Ecuador because the bus where you go across the border would have been much easier. It's possible. We did it, but we had to get a few different buses, a taxi across. Then when we tuk, got to, tuk. Tuk, tuk. Then when we got to the other side, from Peru to the Ecuador side, we had to get a taxi like out of town to an office to get our stamp to leave Peru, even though we're in Ecuador, then get our stamp to enter Ecuador. It was all a bit of a hassle, but we managed it. It's possible, but yeah, our advice is just to get a bus that takes you all the way across. But Huaquillas, border towns are normally not very nice places. I remember thinking this was nice and I got a good first impression from Ecuador. Do you remember? Yeah, I, definitely, because I think we just had a really rough day trying to cross the border. And I just want to say now that I think a lot of South America, it's easy to cross their borders by yourself, no problem. But this one was just a bit faffy. It wasn't dangerous. It wasn't like that difficult. It just was a bit, you know, a bit of a faff. But yeah, you're right. It was a relatively nice border town. Definitely compared to the Peruvian side, that felt really rough and scary. A lot of police around, so it was obviously a bit of a rough area. But yeah, once we got into Ecuador, the, the sun started shining and <laughs> life was good again. We'd, we were out of Peru. Everything was good. And I didn't mention earlier in Game Show Facts, the currency is the US dollar. Why? I don't know. Probably, I think it's because yeah, their, their economy crashed. Yeah, so. it crashed and the people were already using the US dollar. So the government thought, well, if you can't beat them, join them. Exactly. So have your US dollars ready. You could always get them out an ATM, no problem. And if another theme of this episode that we're going to be talking about is Ecuador is cheap. So you don't need many of your US dollars, but we'll get into that as we start talking about different things that we did. And then the next day we got out of that place and went to Guayaquil. Nick's favourite place. Uh, but we went there to couch surf. As you guys know, we love couch surfing. If you haven't heard this podcast before, then couch surfing is when you can stay with complete strangers absolutely for free. So it's a really good way of stretching your budget for your trip. But it's also a really good way to integrate into the culture of the place that you're in. So we were staying with Milton, who was a lovely guy. He lived with his wife and his little son. Yeah, we got to stay with an Ecuadorian family, which is really nice. And he even took us to a salsa lesson, do you remember? Yeah, we didn't actually do it. We sat there and watched. Yeah, but we watched him. Yeah, <laughs> he just took us there to watch him. So yeah. <laughs> didn't want us to dance. <laughs> yeah, which is a bit... Uh, we thought we were going to dance. I thought, oh, I don't really want to, but Amy's good at salsa dancing. And we ended up watching. But anyway, really nice man. We only got to stay for one night, so we didn't get to spend much time with him and his family. But, uh, you know, nice, happy, generous people. His kid was a lot of fun. He had like this, you know, the toy cars kids have, and it's like, you got a better car than I have. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we, we had a laugh with them. Really, really nice people. But the city itself, we were not that impressed with, were we? Guayaquil. No, a lot of people told us before and after we went there that it's not the safest city in Ecuador. You know, being the second biggest in the whole of the country, it's going to have extra crime to it, isn't it? Because, you know, you've got more concentration of people there. But we never run into any problems. We felt safe, but maybe that was because we were with a local guy. But yeah, we just got a warning. So we're passing that on to you. You know, we want you guys to stay safe, but also don't hide yourself away just because of that, you know. Still integrate. It was the second time we came back to Guayaquil because we had to come back to get our flight to Galapagos. So because we were staying in a central hotel, that's when we saw some of the dodgy areas. There was lots of ladies of the night walking uh, around. Yeah. That's what we saw. And just, yeah, it felt unsafe. Nothing happened. And it could be fine. But And it seemed like, it seemed like a fairly modern city. I remember by the water, the, the Malacón, the seafront, there's a lot to see there. But yeah, it just didn't feel right, did it? No, yeah, it was actually one of those places where your gut feeling saying, oh, OK, let's get back to the hotel. So, yeah, just be aware of your surroundings. But there's so much out of the cities in Ecuador to see. You won't be spending much time in the cities. And a great example of that is Iampi. Oh, so we got I a love bus. Iampi. Oh, this place, one of our favourites of the whole trip. We got a bus to the coast. There's a popular bus route which would take backpackers to the very famous party town of Montanita. And what you have to do is you, you get there, you don't get off the bus at Montanita, you go another stop, then 
you ask the locals and they'll help you. Then you get another bus, the short journey to Iampi. Proper, sleepy, rural beach town. And after lots of days traveling and a bit of a hectic time we had in Peru, including some big parties and big nights out, all we wanted to do was chill like for a week by the beach. And we had such good accommodation there. We stayed in a place called Mango House and we don't normally shout out accommodation, but we love these guys. They really, really looked after us. And what I love about them the most is it is a hotel or hostel, but it only has three rooms. So it's really small, you know, like a bamboo hut. It was so cute. And I just loved staying there. It really made our time there special. And the people that worked there were really sweet gave some really good advice. I think the beach there isn't the best beach I've ever been on, but we loved it, didn't we? Like, you know, we'd wake up in the morning, you'd normally go into the water for a morning dip and and just like waking up in the morning, having like birds singing outside. We do yoga. I do yoga. Cook our own food. Really clean eating week, you know, didn't have any gluten or dairy and all of that. Really looked after ourselves, did lots of meditation, had a really productive week, got loads of work done. So I just feel like when I think about that time, I just feel really happy because it's not a hustling and bustling place. There isn't much to do there. If you're a surfer, then this is a great place to come. This coast of Ecuador is great for surfing. But if you're like a party person, then you're going to want to be 10 minutes down the road in Montanita. But then you could, you know, you might be a person that wants both. You could do Montanita for a week and then go to Ayampi for a week. But yeah. yeah, it was really good. It's super cheap to get the buses in between those places. I think it's something like 30, 40 P or like 50 cents to yeah. get uh, down the road, like 10 minutes. And it was just a really beautiful little place. I loved it. Oh, we had a fantastic time. The beach, like you said, you're right. It's not the best looking beach ever, but we had a great time there. The temperature of the water was beautiful. And there was one day where it was raining, but we were swimming in the sea. And it was like some of the most fun I ever had in my life. Like, do you remember? We had a great yeah, time. It was, I think maybe it was fun because we were skinny dipping. <laughs> we did. I wasn't going to mention that. <laughs> I had a great time. Um, but actually, uh, I am P. This is a great one for people who live um, like the camper van life. People that travel yeah. and live in a van, which we've spoken about before on the podcast. We saw a lot of people parked up right near the beach. So... That's where they're living. You know, they live there right on the beach uh, because the town's quite quiet. Parking didn't seem to be any problem. I don't think there was any parking restrictions. So you're right. I don't want to promote this place too much because it's nice that not many people were there. But especially if you've got your own camper van, that would be the perfect place. Especially if you've got some surfboards. Yeah, like you said, wake up in the morning, you're there. You can have a great time. So while we were there, we talked to Paula, who works at the Mango House where we were staying, and we asked her if she could tell us a little bit about Ayampe. Well, Ayampe is the perfect combination of jungle, ocean. It's super, super relaxed, super peaceful. You will find lots of things to do. It's small, but you have lots of things to do. You can surf, uh, you can swim, you can do uh, like trekking, you have some good trails, and we have some beautiful beaches near, so you can go walking and it's or by bus, and you will have a great time here. <laughs> And for us, one of the best things, and I'm not just saying this because you're here, one of the best things has been staying here at Mango House. So can you explain what type of accommodation this is? Well, thanks. (laughs) It's true. Here in Mango House, we have three rooms. Each room has its own private bathroom with hot water. We have Wi-Fi. Uh, We have a shared kitchen with a refri. And it's well equipped if you want to cook uh, we like our guests to come here and feel like they are at home. You have a good hammocks, good chairs, so to feel like at home. Yeah, and so Iampi, it's a quiet place. It's a place to come to relax. But the weekend we came here, there was a party going on. <laughs> yeah. Can you describe what, what the party was? Yes, here Mother's Day is like so important. So they make a three-day party with loud music they start on friday like at 6 p.m and it finishes on sunday like at 11 p.m and people drink a lot they dance a lot bands come so you can hear music like equatorian music here they heard a lot of salsa merengue 
it's a nice experience if you want to to see other culture and other things. It's good to come on May and see Mother's Day here in Ayampe. <laughs> if you want to relax, maybe it's a bit difficult because the music is so, so loud that it's impossible to sleep. <laughs> came here and saw that though I would recommend coming to see it you were saying that they drink alcohol and there's a special drink that they have here what is it yes it's called uh, caña it has a lot of alcohol they put apple and canela and they heat it and then you have to drink it uh, hot and so you get drunk so quickly because you drink, you drink, and you don't realize you are drinking <laughs> so much. And here they drink a lot of beer also. So that drink that you're talking about, Kenya, is that local to this region or the whole of Ecuador? It's called Kenya Manavita. It's this region, it's called uh, Manaví. So it's from mostly from here, Puerto Lopez. It's like a province. Talking about like drinking and parties, what do you think of the town nearby Montanita? Montanita, yes, it's here like half an hour from Ayampe. It's totally different from here. Lots of bars, lots of restaurants. If you want to go party, uh, you can go there. Personally, I don't like uh, Montanita. That's why I'm here in, wow. in Ayampe. It's completely, completely different. It's the opposite. Finally, from me, do you like living in Ecuador? Yes, I love Ayampe. It's a beautiful place. It has, it's always hot. You <laughs> are not going to be cold <laughs> any day. Uh, and it's people. People here are really good. So I love Ecuador. So come to Ayampe and visit us. Mango House, Vista Mar. Uh, you can uh, see in our website uh, www.vistamarayampe.com. Uh, uh, so. Come and, and see us. You are all welcome. <laughs> we would definitely recommend it. And one more thing that I think is so great about this place. Can you explain who Fernando is and what he does? <laughs> <laughs> Fernando is a, is a, how do you say, it's the guy that sells fruit, fruits and vegetables here. He comes in a red truck. He speaks a lot. And if you want uh, good vegetables and fruit, uh, you have to buy Fernando. He comes from Puerto Viejo, that's a, city, a town like two hours from here, and he comes every day, and he's a good person to meet here and to buy him, to, to buy his things, and he cooks really, really good. You have to buy Fernando's uh, humitas. Don't forget about that. Are they the, the corn things that have cheese inside? Yes, yeah, they have we cheese, have it has corn, uh, and if you want, Fernando also cooks. You can uh, pay him and he comes to the hotel and he cooks for you like the typical food of Ecuador. Whoa, wow. very good. Right, we'll let you go now because it's your birthday. Yes. So we'll let you go and celebrate. Happy <laughs> birthday. Cumpleaños. Muchas gracias <laughs> and bueno, thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Paula. And that was so good that she spoke to us on her birthday. Yeah, she's good at her job. Very, very good. And Fernando, what a man. Oh, He's got the goods, hasn't he? He really has. We got some good food from him and it was a perfect week to eat clean, wasn't it? Yeah, and she'll give you his number and you can just WhatsApp him and tell him what you want and it gets delivered to your door. So we lived a good life there and I am people really did. But one tip, bring plenty of cash because there's no cash machines. Oh, yeah. I, I believe uh, Paola was telling us that if she has to do anything, like go to a bank, get money, just normal normal life things, she has to go to Puerto Viejo, which is like a, I think it's like an hour journey north, an hour back. Imagine that, you know, a two or three hour journey just to knit to the bank or get some money out. So bring plenty of dollars. After the wonderful Ayampe, we moved on to Cuenca. Now, this is the one that I said is the most beautiful town or city. Is it a city? City, yes. Yeah. Uh, in Ecuador and it's just to the south it's in the center of the country but just to the south a little bit and its official name is Santa Ana de los Rios de Cuenca so it's quite a long name but people just call it Cuenca yeah so like I said it's in the southern Ecuador's Andes mountains it's known for its Tombe Bamba river waterfront and handicrafts including Panama hats 
Yes, that's where the Panama hat is made. Not from Panama. It comes from Ecuador, specifically Cuenca. So when you walk around, you'll see lots of Panama hat shops. And I think two of them, two of the main shops, you can go into them and they give you a free tour. They show you how they make the hats and all of that, which we did. And I'd recommend it. It was quite fascinating. I don't think the one that we went into, they didn't speak English. So I was just kind of translating for Nick. I'm not sure I got all of it, but <laughs> it was it still learned some so it was uh, quite interesting so yeah it's known for its Panama hats it also has a lot of expats in Cuenca lots of US expats yeah I think that's just because it's beautiful and it's so cheap so maybe we'll start talking about some prices like you can for between 10 and 15 dollars like you could have a good standard own private room sometimes with a private bathroom and lunch like two dollars for a good lunch down at the food market which it makes Ecuador very affordable for everyone. Europeans, of course, but especially if you imagine you are from the United States and you're used to using the dollars and you might spend, you know, like five, six, seven dollars just for a beer. And then when you arrive in Cuenca, it's like one dollar, one dollar fifty. It's going to blow your mind. So you can understand why a lot of expats live there. And Cuenca really is beautiful, colorful, quite a few different town squares. The river you mentioned, we took a little walk along the river and there's a little park area and it's like a love park. Do you oh, remember? Okay, I was going to say the same thing. I didn't know if you remember. We saw lots of couples who like, yeah, just together, <laughs> they sneak off. Let's get it on. Seriously. Oh, baby. We filmed it We got we, and we saw all the good stuff as well. <laughs> we sound like perverts now. We filmed we, all the good stuff. We went down the park and filmed all the couples getting it on. But uh, we were just filming anyway and then we, we just realised, oh, there's a couple over there, like, God, what are they doing? Oh, there's another one. There's another couple walking towards the park and yeah, it's like love park they're just like laying on the grass on top of each other not caring about who's around them it is it is quite surreal we we felt like should we join in or <laughs> <laughs> we didn't don't get too excited it must just be because it's just a beautiful romantic city but yeah i really really enjoyed our time in cuenca you have to you have to see it to believe it it's a really nice place yeah we actually didn't go, the only reason we went was because we ended up going to the galapagos islands and that was kind of a last minute treat for us but the way that we were heading from ayampi which is on the coast we were going to keep going up and there's a place there which is considered as the poor man's Galapagos so we knew we'd either be going to the real Galapagos or the poor man's Galapagos we ended up going to the real one and flying back to Guayaquil so we thought let's turn our route the other way and we went to Cuenca instead so we weren't meant to go there but I'm so glad that we did because we had so many recommendations to go because it is so beautiful and a lovely city and yeah I'd recommend staying for around four days I think it's a four to five day place really great place to hang out so let's move on from Cuenca and let's talk a little bit more about budget because things got interesting in Ecuador. Yeah, it was super cheap. So if you've heard our episodes about a long-term travel before, then you'll know that our budget every day was £30. That's Great British Pounds, which is around, what, yeah, 36 36 $37, dollars, yeah. And that's for both of us. That's for accommodation, food, activities, everything together. That's the, what we aim for every day to stay on budget. But we took that £30 and took it down to, I think it was like, Anything between 20 and 23 pounds a day. Yeah, 20, sometimes like 18 pound a day. Like we could do it in Ecuador. And it brought our average way down because before Ecuador, we, our average was way above our target. But we managed to bring it down a lot. And so what I was saying earlier, if you want to sample some of South America, but don't really know where to go and don't have much time. And if you don't have much money, Ecuador even still is the best choice for you because it's so cheap. So when we're in Ayampe, the place we were talking about that's on the coast, every day we were spending around 16, 17 pounds. So we're going below our new budget. In Cuenca, we were doing around £21 a day. Yeah, £20. Because it was around this time that every day I was writing down what we were spending. So I can see what we spent it on, what cost what. You know, I've got dinner here that costs $5. I've got lunch that costs $3. And that was Ornado, which I'll get Nick to explain in a minute. Because that's Whoa. your passion in life, isn't it? Yes. That, that bit of food. But yeah, it's just really cheap. And then moving on to Banos, which is the next destination we're going to tell you about. We're spending, you know, 
£33 a day, but that day we were doing a bunch of activities for both of us. You know, it was so cheap. £21 the next day, £19.99 the next. And in Banyos, we did a lot of activities, which again, I will explain to you. So can we talk about Banyos now? Because this is such a fun place. It really is. Its official name is Banyos de Agua Santa. And I tell you that because I think there's a few places in Ecuador which have the name Banyos. So, you know, you don't want to get a bus to the wrong Banyos because this one's really fun and I don't know what the other one's like. Now, most of you, well, maybe not most, um, maybe I'm assuming you're more intelligent than, uh, than you are, but Banyos in Spanish means restroom. It means bathroom. Yeah, bathroom. Toilet. <laughs> but this place isn't <laughs> like a toilet. It's great. The reason why it's called bathroom is because it has lots of thermal baths like thermal waters because there's a volcano nearby but once we were there we realized it does actually mean bath and and we have a place in england called bath and that's called bath because there are baths <laughs> there you go it all makes sense so this is the bath of ecuador and not only are there thermal waters there where you can relax and they're good for you for a number of reasons this is an adventure sports paradise adrenaline junkies People who might have been to a Queenstown in New Zealand, it's like that, but like a tenth of the price. It's so cheap. So you'll find mountains, rivers, waterfalls and hot springs. There's also the really famous swing, which is called At the End of the World. Um, and it's in a place called Casa de Arbol, which means treehouse. And it's really cool. You might have seen our pictures on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. But yeah, it's just what I think there's a few of them around the world and just massive swings that go off the edge of a cliff. And it looks really scary. They have to kind of strap you in. You can get some sick pictures and there's a guy there who you can tip and like he pushes you and like he pushes you hard. He knows what he's doing and yeah, you can get some really great pictures. And yeah, you just feel like you're swinging off the end of the world. So much fun. And even in that same complex, you paid like two dollars to get in. You have the swing. There's a tree house like you mentioned before. There's a couple of little zip lines. There's more swings, isn't there, actually? Yeah, I there's think there's more than three one. big swings in the end because the first one, you have the guide that pushes you. And not only does he push you, he, like, twists you round. He gets you to, like, go upside down. So you're hanging off the edge of the cliff upside down. So it is really cool. And, like, you can make it look extra dangerous with the angle of your photos as well. Um, so and I mean everybody wants to make themselves look better on Instagram don't they That's so. what about. our trip looks a hundred times better on Instagram than what it really was <laughs> but to do it the cheap way if you're thrifty like us and you know we're thrifty we can't afford to do all these tours you can get there very cheaply yeah, so if you want to do it the expensive way and get the shuttle I guess your life's going to be easier but I don't know I don't know if it could get any easier than the bus the bus is one dollar to get all the way up the mountain. It's like a 30 minute journey to get to the end of the world or Casa de Arbol. That's what the name that you're going to be looking out for. But yeah, super cheap, $1 to get up there. And we're giving you all the information today to get the bus, write this down, pens and papers ready or <laughs> write it on your phone. Or if you're driving, pull over. <laughs> so to get there, the bus stops in like Banyos town on the corner of, oh, why am I reading this? It's in Spanish, isn't it? On the corner of Vicente Roccafuerte. Do you want to spell it just in case? V Vicente, V-I-C-E-N-T-E, -E, Roccafuerte, R-O-C-A-F-U-E-R-T-E. -E. So that road and Pastaza, P-A-S-T-A-Z-A. -A on the corner of those two roads in the main town, you'll see a lot of tourists queuing up. It's on blogs, you can Google it. But get there in the morning so you've got enough time to get up there, do the swing, and then get the bus back. Now, not only can you do that swing, there's so many other things to do in Banyos. So you've got like bungee jumps, you've got massive zip lines, you can go canyoning, which we did. We'll explain that in a second. There's balls where you sit in and it like you swing off the side of the mountain, but you're both inside this ball. So you're swinging and you're turning, going upside down. You know what I mean? Yeah, I wouldn't want to do that. I'm not into that one. Obviously, because it's called Banyos, there are baths there, like thermal pools. There's so much to do, guys. I would highly re like if you're going to Ecuador, this is the one place that is an absolute do not miss. It's so much fun and cheap. 
And if you're doing your research prior to going there and you go onto the weather apps and you have a look at the weather there and it says something like two degrees, do not listen to it, okay? This is weird, yeah. It's really weird. So before going there, it's known for being like this hot adventure place yet and you're always doing like water sports yet it's really cold so it actually we nearly didn't go because we saw the weather was so cold it was around two three degrees and we thought no we don't have the clothing for that we don't want to be in water we ended up going and it was how many degrees i bought a coat ready for it (laughs) it was normal like 18 19 20 because we're still quite high up the altitude's still quite high but the weather's good but yeah i'm gonna give you guys a test now i've checked today and this is we are December 2019, I've checked on my iPhone on the weather app. What is the weather in Banos de Agua Santa in Ecuador? Check now. I bet you it says it's about one or two or three degrees. For some reason, the weather app is wrong. It is not. It must be giving another Banos instead. But it says Banos, Ecuador. But yeah, it just always gives the wrong details. So if you have the luxury of asking somebody that's already there or I don't know me emailing the hostel but i'm sure you know th- we're right by the equator at this point so the weather wasn't going to be that cold so yeah just don't let that scare you off that was my only advice there can we talk about our canyoning yeah so explain what canyoning is first so like rappelling with a rope down waterfalls you can also do jumps you just any adventurous way to get down these waterfalls and we went down four waterfalls was it And had a lot of fun. There was a bit of jumping and sliding down waterfalls as well. The final waterfall, it was the best one because it was about 50 meters. It was a big boy. And like you get to the edge and the guy's just like, just jump over. He's like, what? What do I do? And you think he's going to lower you down uh, slowly. But you just fall. And then like right near the end, he stops you from falling. And then you just slowly go down the rest. But like what a buzz so much fun wasn't it Mm, they didn't tell us that when they were selling it to us they just said you know you're going down rappelling down these waterfalls although that was quite scary in itself as well because the first couple that we did i'd say they're around 15 to 20 meters and it's a full-on waterfall guys like you're going down so it's quite slippy obviously when you've got a constant waterfall the rocks turn a bit mossy and slimy and so you're going down your feet can't really grip that much but then you've got this plummet of water going in your face i loved it though like i'm not the massive adventure person but i really really enjoyed it but the last one oh my god i didn't think i'd do the last one yeah it's around 50 meters he drops you really fast of like 30 meters yeah i'd say so and then catches you at the end as uh, once you've had a heart attack basically and then lowers you down but I was so proud of myself for doing it because that a few years ago you wouldn't have got me on that rope at all no you're right you did it I was impressed like you managed to face a lot of fears on this trip and as a result you felt great for doing it I just wanted to mention three of the smaller waterfalls you went down like we fell over a few times it's hard not to isn't it you said yourself the rocks are slippy you've got this waterfall hitting you in the face and at one point, the guide's telling you, like, go from one side of the waterfall to the other. And you think, like, how do you do that without getting smacked in the face? And the answer is, you can't do it without getting smacked in the face. So we fell over a couple of times, but I think that's normal. And it was they really, really gear, good fun. They don't they? Yeah, you're fine. You've got helmets, knee pads, arm pads, all of that. They give you too much gear, if anything. And for, it was, it was the morning and a bit of the afternoon. We had so much fun, like four hours of fun. And how much does it cost? Fifteen dollars, and that's one five. Quince, quince dollars. Like twelve quid. Come on. Yeah, amazing price. Like we felt so buzzed up after it was great, and we'd only spent fifteen each. So you know, we essentially kind of stayed in our budget as well with food. I guess we went out with a little bit of our accommodation as well. But no, super affordable. And a great place to go. And out of all the... I haven't even mentioned everything that you can do in Banos. You can do Ruta de las Cascadas, which is the waterfall route. So a lot of people rent bikes, which is around $6 for the day. And you do this... How many kilometers would you say it was? I think it was around like 60 kilometers. Yeah, it was far. The whole route, I mean. We did like three quarters of it. Oh, yeah. Uh, Yeah, it's long. It would take you all day. But the great thing is... It's all downhill. So you don't have to do any work. It's (laughs) amazing. I was very happy. And then you stop whenever you want. When you see an amazing waterfall, you stop, picture, carry on. You can do it as quick or as slow as you want. 
And so it's called the route of the waterfalls because you visit seven main waterfalls along that route. And yeah, like you said, you can just pull over and stop and have a look. But yeah, beautiful waterfalls. The last one is called Pelon del Diablo. And that's where you can do, and along this route as well, that's where you'll find all the zip line companies. So you can rent the bike for $6 and then on your way, do quick little zip lines. I think they're like $10 each and they're big zip lines. Yeah, proper. Proper big. But once you do get to the Diablo waterfall, Palon del Diablo, this is, I think if you Google Banos de Agua Santa, a lot of the time this picture comes up, even though it's out of the town. But this is one of the famous waterfalls to see. And we're going to transport you there now because this is how we got on when we got there. Okay, so we're walking like halfway into the uh, waterfall and we get absolutely drenched. Uh, yeah, it's really wet. They can feel the force, it's so strong. Now we've got to pull through like a tunnel. Oh my god, I'm getting so wet. Ah! The tunnel is like not even half a meter. I'm basically crawling through a cave with all these black stones and all the water's coming through. Oh my god, this is basically hot on me, which is where you go underground through the caves. Ah! Ow, oh, I just hit my back. Ow, oh, that really hurt. Oh. How are you doing, Nick? Oh, uh, he's really far behind me. I'm a bit stuck with the backpack with no helmet. Oh man, he's got his backpack on. Uh, <laughs> my knees. This isn't very pleasant, actually. Okay. How was your next? experience? Bit shit so far. You didn't really like that, did you, Nick? I honestly didn't. We were crawling through tight spaces, like wet water splashing at us, cold because when you're wet and it's a bit windy you're cold it was fascinating and yeah you get really up close and you can feel the force of nature but crawling through tight spaces is not for me but just a word of warning you don't have to do that to no. go there like that we just went a little bit further where we saw other people going so yeah super cool and to get into there you had to pay i think didn't you yeah i can't but remember how much it it's was Ecuador, not much yeah, it would have been cheap. And then finally, another thing you can do in Banos is the bath. So they're called Termas de la Virgin or Virgin, Virgin. And we paid $3.50 to enter. My biggest recommendation is to go there at night time because it's so warm, you know, thermal baths. You can go there at night time and it's open so you can see the sky. You can look at the stars when you're there. It's a really nice local activity to do it's cheap like we said three dollars fifty but there's not that many tourists there are there no locals we actually got talking to one guy who goes there every night do you remember like he was yeah. well happy chatting to us he goes there every night i can see why it's, uh, it's it, uh, the water it's got like healing properties in it good tip <laughs> when you first get there go upstairs because that's where the cooler baths are you want to start off a bit cooler and then you go downstairs to the hotter ones because if you start in the hot ones, you can't go to the cool ones because they feel too cold. Does that make sense? Yeah, so that's where the changing rooms are. You have to wear a cap, but you can buy that from them. I think it's actually $3 to get in and then the 50 cents is for the the cap. But, you know, it's like a proper little swimming hat. So everybody looks cool when they're in there. But you go up to the changing rooms and, yeah, so there's three pools in total. As you're walking up the stairs, you'll get two at the top. The one on your left is the coldest one. It's quite chilly, actually. The one to your right is... That was nice. That's the good one. That's the one you're going to spend most of the time in. Then once you're used to that and a bit cold of that one, you can go downstairs and that's where it's really hot. We started in the hottest one and I like almost fainted because it was just too hot for me. It was proper. I think it was like... 40 degrees? Yeah, I think it's more like the the top of four, like 48, 49, like almost 50. That's hot. Oh, too hot. the hardcore people are in there. But it was brilliant. And like you said, the stars above your head. There's a big waterfall nearby. It's a spectacular landscape. And worth noting that it closes at 9 p.m. Yeah, so make sure you get there for then. I'd say it's an activity. You're going to spend about two hours there yeah, so. in total. And if you've been to the baths in Budapest, it's not as fancy as that. It's a bit rough and ready. You know, like a lot of the floor is just cement. It's not tiled or anything. It's very natural, rough and ready. So don't have your expectations very high with that. Another thing I remembered in Banyos that you want to do is drink the hot chocolate. It's really famous uh, chocolate in Ecuador, you know, 
if you look at a lot of the chocolate packets that you get, you know, good real dark chocolate, it's going to come from Ecuador more than likely. So make sure you get some hot chocolate there and get almuerzo in the market as well. So almuerzo means lunch, but they call all their little dinners there lunch, don't they? I love this. Every day I went to the food market because, again, it's cheap, good quality food. It's when you walk in and all the ladies that are on their market stools, they're like shouting you over, like trying to win your business. I'm waving right now, but no one apart from Amy can see what I'm doing. And like, if I'm honest, they all pretty much serve the same, but it's worth, if you go to one that you like, keep going there because the more you go, like the better treatment you get. And the best thing you mentioned earlier, Amy, is ornado, which is oven roasted pork. Yeah. It's like a, a hog roast, you know, how we would cook a whole pig slowly. And... We were a lot more vegetarian on this trip and we actually were a lot more vegetarian now after watching Game Changers on Netflix. (laughs) You guys should watch it. It's an amazing documentary. But I have to admit, the Ornado, the pork in Ecuador, was sensational. It really was. So a lot of the time you do see the pig there it's like a whole pig and they cut it bit by bit so if you're a bit squeamish or a very strong vegan i would recommend maybe not walking through the market because uh it, it really hits you in the face but it does taste good it is amazing so i'd recommend either getting the ornado or the yapping gacho which is they do these really really incredible potatoes in ecuador They're like roast potatoes, but they're fried. And so they've got really good crispy outside and they're cooked in almost like that pork fat or goose fat. They're they're amazing. It comes with avocado, that particular dish. A chorizo sausage. chorizo as well. Yeah, and a bit of salad. And it normally comes with a drink within the price. I think you're paying normally about $3 for a plate of yapping gacho. But yapping gacho starts with a double L. That's the Y sound. Yapping gacho. Just so that you can see it on the menu. And there are also some great fruit and vegetables. And the fruit stall is doing amazing fruit smoothies. So I loved it. Went to the food market every day in Banos. But how good was Banos? It was brilliant. I've answered my own question. How good was Banyos? It was brilliant. <laughs> we loved it. Like such a fun place, a must go in Ecuador, a must go in South America. Absolutely. And before we went and after, if we ever saw a blog, a lot of the bloggers were saying it was their favourite place in Ecuador, if not the whole of South America. So yeah, don't want to get your expectations too high, but it's really good. It's the best. Time for a game? Yeah, so let's have a game and then after that we're going to come back and tell you a bit of how you can do the Amazon. Even if you don't have much time in Ecuador, you can still get a real good taste of the Amazon by going to like the outer edge of it like we did. So we'll explain that, but first we're going to have our game. Now in this series we actually haven't done the Capitals game because we it's been hard to get guests on, hasn't it, while travelling? It has. I thought it might be easy, but no, like being in the right place at the right time to record, too difficult. We've been too busy. We're too interesting, just us two. (laughs) Don't need anyone else. So no, no guest. But But we're going to do the Capitals game in a slightly different format and Nick's going to test me. And I've just realised I was meant to look at a map before this. I can't do it now. So this is really going to test your geographical knowledge. And anyone listening along at home or driving wherever you listen if you think you're quite good with maps stop looking at a map no i just need to have like put your a, phone away no i'm just gonna look at like a little bit if people listening think you're good with your your maps and geography knowledge this is gonna be a great test this will separate the men from the boys so because ecuador is on the equator what we're doing now is i'm gonna give you two capital cities and you've got to tell me which one out of those two is closer to the equator okay there are eight all right do you think your map knowledge is pretty good yeah i'm just trying to load my map now you can't no 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 i right, put okay, it away put right. it away good okay i've turned my phone right, off she now. hasn't looked at a map are you ready i feel like google maps was behind that then trying to stop me from looking because it's never crashed before and that app just crashed so that's annoying right okay yeah i'm ready <laughs> estoy lista okay First round. Which one of these is closer to the equator? Bogota or Caracas? Oh, So Bogota, okay. Colombia, Caracas, Venezuela. Okay, so I know Bogota is like kind of the centre of Colombia. And Caracas is like up towards the coast of Venezuela. I think 
Bogota because that's closer to Ecuador. Yeah, Bogota. I didn't ask for your working out, but actually, you worked it out very well. Correct. Uh, yes. Bogota is close to the equator. Round two. These are two places that are very far apart from each other. Paris or Wellington, New Zealand. Which one of them are closer to the equator? Oh, okay. Well, you've done a northern and a southern hemisphere You're there. You're not getting extra points for that. Bit cheeky. So I'm just trying to show how intelligent I am. Right. So Paris or Wellington? My gut feeling is Paris because Wellington is the most southern capital oh, city good in the world. Oh, God, I'm so clever. I'm going to say Paris. You are wrong. Really? That's the mad thing. Wellington, you're right, is the most southern, but Wellington is closer to the equator than Paris. Wow, okay. Next, round three. Tokyo in Japan or Seoul in South Korea? Oh, see, you've picked an area of the world I don't really know the geography too well. I think that Seoul, what country is that? South Korea? Yeah. I think that's lower than Japan. It's got the word South in it. Yeah, that's not why I'm saying it, but I do actually think that's lower than Japan. So I'm going to say Seoul. Don't. No. <gasps> Tokyo is closer to the equator. Really? The countries are pretty much the same, but Seoul is in the north of South Korea and Tokyo is middle, more towards the south of Japan. Yeah. But I like your workings out. Okay. People at home, like, keep score because if anyone gets all of these, I want to know and I'll be very impressed because this is hard. Yeah, get in touch on, like, Instagram, Facebook or Twitter. We're on all three. Or text Amy. Her number's 0759. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Love how you actually said the start of my number then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, no, you that was guess. your number. That's that was, number. That was yeah, your yeah. number, so joke's on you. You can guess the rest. <laughs> okay, round four. London or Copenhagen in Denmark. Which one is closest to the equator? Well, it's I'd say London because Copenhagen's above us. You would say correctly. Yes, well done. London, not bad. Round five. Ottawa in... Canada. Or Reykjavik in, in Iceland. Iceland. Which Ooh. one's closer to the cheeky, equator? Cheeky, cheeky. Both northern countries. They are. My gut feeling is that... Wait, Ottawa is to the left of Canada, right? Do you want me to answer that? Um, no, I can't oh, no, give you any help. Oh, no, it's on the right. Uh, my gut feeling is that Ottawa is closer to the equator than Reykjavik. Correct. Reykjavik Yay. is the most northern capital city in the world. Of course it is. But you I got it right. Wear, I should wear that out, yeah. Next one. Round six. Cairo in Egypt or Riyadh in Saudi Arabia? Oh, I have no workings out here. I'm just going to go with Riyadh. You're correct. Yes. Well done. Okay, round seven. Bangkok in Thailand or Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia? Which one is more southern? Oh, God. I know where they are, but like not in relation to the equator. Bangkok or where? Kuala Lumpur. Mm. KL, as the kids say. I'm actually, I'm going to go with Kuala Lumpur because I know the equator's goes through India or is around India so actually I think it's Kuala Lumpur what's India got to do with anything because I just think Kuala Lumpur is closer to India than Bangkok well okay you're right well done yeah. Kuala Lumpur is that four you got now uh, five so yeah correct well done that's five you have now out of seven but there's one more left Ooh. round number eight Moscow or Helsinki wow okay Moscow or Helsinki? Obviously, most people would think Helsinki is more northern because it's Scandinavian. You just think it's going to be like more northern. So I'm just going to go with Moscow. You're correct. Moscow yes. is closer to the equator. So I've got six out of eight. That's actually very good. Yeah, you started a bit patchy with 50%. You had two out of four, didn't you? And then you smashed it. I did. I'm actually really proud of myself there. I've been quite good with quizzes this week. With uh, staying in Burnley with Nick's mum, there's been a lot of quiz shows on the TV and I've shocked myself of how many questions I got right. Check you out. So I'd say well done, but if anyone is listening and got all of them right without cheating, we want to know about it. Yeah, give us a little message. Now that the game's over, let's carry on with educating you about Ecuador. So like I said, we're going to now talk about 
if you want to go to the Amazon rainforest but don't have much time, you can just go to the edge. This is where we would recommend that you go. Tena and Misa Hawaii. Yeah, and Tena is very close from Banos de Agua Santa. I think the bus is like two or three hours. And you go out of the mountains, a lot lower down into the Amazon basin. It gets a lot more hot and humid. But what we said before with Ecuador, you can be on a bus for a little amount of time and the scenery completely changes. It was exciting to go into the Amazon rainforest, although I was a bit nervous because of just bugs and spiders and stuff like that. And actually, something we didn't mention was the first time we saw a real-life tarantula spider was when we were in Ayampe and we went on a little hike, just us oh, two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were walking down this dirt path just by ourselves. We had been told that this was a good route to walk for some good views, but we didn't get to see the views in the end because, well, we were actually having an argument, weren't we? And oh, so we yeah. were walking in silence and Nick just stopped and he went, Amy, I don't know whether to tell you this. I'm thinking... What? Are you going to break up with me? <laughs> no. <laughs> what was it you said? So I just said, oh, I've seen something that you're not going to like. <laughs> we can, e- I can either show you it or just don't look and we'll keep walking or turn around and walk back. And yeah, it was like a big, hairy, black tarantula. Massive. And at that point, we, we both turned around and walked back to our hotel. The trek was over and we thought, do we really want to go to the Amazon rainforest? It was just so shocking because it was around four metres away from us in loads of like trees and foliage but you could spot it straight away. It was that big. It was just absolutely massive. From four meters away, you could see the hair on it. It was like maybe double the size of my hand. Oh, it was big. So at this point, we're apprehentious. Apprehentious. We're apprehentious. Apprehensive. We we have apprehension about going into the Amazon rainforest. But we'll first talk about Tenna because Tenna is like a city, but right on the edge of the Amazon rainforest. A good place to stay because... There's lots of things there, like any city, but you can also, you know, you can book tours to take you into the jungle. And we were staying at a hostel called Hostel Tenna Naui. And the owner, Jens, is a German guy. He took us on a day trip into the jungle. Now, you'll actually hear a lot more from him on our Amazon documentary that we're making out in the next month or two. So we will go into more depth about this. But he showed us a jungle for the day. The Amazon's a big place. So you can't see it all in one day. Obviously, we saw a tiny patch. And it's actually a patch that he has bought and like he owns. But Bala. Yeah, but he's doing that to protect it. So no one else can chop it down, basically. We had a really, really good day with him. First, we did a trek around, it was like two hours. And Amy, bless her, she'd just come on her period. So she was having very bad stomach cramps. Yeah, Not while hiking through the Amazon, sweating and walking through rivers. Yeah. But I still loved it. <laughs> oh, we actually had a brilliant day walking around. It's an amazing place. You just feel like everywhere is alive. It's so loud, all the noises. After our trek, we then stole a boat. <laughs> oh, yeah. We stole a boat. It's like a, it's a bit like a gondola in Venice. So we were on one of them with this big stick where we were like pushing ourselves along this water. The water was dead calm. Like it was beautiful. I think you need to explain why we stole the boat. Well, we first got to this place where he, you know, Jens knew where this guy was who we could hire a boat from. No one was in sight. We waited quite a long time. And so Jens was like, screw it. Let's just do it. We took the boat and we only went round in like a circle. But it was fascinating. At this point, it was more peaceful. The water was calm. We could see a lot of fish. I saw the biggest fish I've ever seen in my life. I thought it was like a a huge anaconda snake thing. I think it's the anaconda, like the real big ones. The ones that like eat Barracuda. Do you mean a barracuda? Is that not a fish? Yeah, you're talking about a fish. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, this fish. My God, humongous. I've got the name of it, actually. It's an arapinma. Arapinma? Fish? If anybody knows what that is. Google that. It's as big as your car. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <laughs> and we're in like a tiny little river lagoon bit. And I just thought, how on earth has that grown to that size? But we also saw in the distance in the trees some monkeys, didn't we? I think they were spider monkeys. Oh. That was amazing. Seeing them in the wild, in the Amazon rainforest. It was a proper, like, adventurous day in this incredible place, which is so different to anywhere we've seen before. It really is scary, but it's a magical place. Look, Nick, right, so I've just Googled this fish. It's called a arapaima. It's like a whale slash hippo. <laughs> it's not a whale. A-R-A-P-A-I-M-A. 
I just don't even know how to describe what that is. I don't think it even looks like a fish. There's a man holding one there. It looks over two meters. It's just like over his shoulders. It is absolutely massive. I can see another picture. It's three men holding it up. It's amazing. It is absolutely massive. But yeah, we saw one of those. It, on our little adventure day out, he also took us to see a tribe as well, an indigenous tribe, didn't he? Yeah. Again, we'll talk more about that in our next episode. Yeah, and if you do want to do that yourself, that would be more that you'd have to go to Misa Hawaii, which is a place that also has monkeys just in the centre of this of the town. You walk around and you'll just see them. And there's people kind of looking after the monkeys as well. They look after their welfare, feed them and all of that. And you'll see them playing around with them. They're almost like brothers. It's amazing seeing humans and monkeys play because he was like pulling its tail, not in a mean way, but the, the monkey was loving it. And it was just like coming back and, you know kind of messing around with each other how brothers fight it was uh yeah really interesting to see but you can go to misa hawaii go to the water and there's boats taking you on different tours to different tribes so you can go there watch the tribe sing learn about their life see how they make alcohol foods and teas yeah it's really interesting it really is and like yeah these are it's set up for tourists you know it's nothing amazing and pioneering that we were doing but it's either that or you go deep in the jungle on your own and you find a tribe that probably don't want to be found so you know what's what's the choice really cannibals but, <laughs> yeah, there you go but mr who are you yeah amazing little jungle town this is proper in the jungle like you said monkeys running around the town square you're right by this big river it was like a massive raging river i'm sure nothing compared to the actual amazon river but this whole place is incredible. Scared the hell out of me, <laughs> but it was amazing. Yeah, and just to be clear, so they, they're two separate places. Tena, which is spelled T-E-N-A, is a bigger kind of mini city. And there you're going to find way more accommodation and things like that. Bigger city. It's half an hour away from Misa Hawaii, which is spelled M-I-S-A-H-U-A double L I Misa Hawaii and uh, there it's more rural you'll find way more indigenous people they don't actually speak much Spanish there because it's not their primary language but you'll definitely get by with a bit of Spanish I'm not sure if you'll get away with English because we didn't even try did we no you will need the Spanish for sure I think it's worth saying where we were staying so it was just outside Misa Hawaii but there's quite a few of them around South and Central America Selena hostel but I've been to some before and not been impressed, but this one was a proper like jungle lodge made out of wood, again by this big raging river. Uh, yeah, it was an impressive place. I uh, I really enjoyed it there. It was cool. Yeah, we're we're not massive fans of Selena, if we're honest, but this place was cool. And but there was like no one there. We were kind of the only people there, so we were just hanging out with the staff for a while. But it was also the second place we saw tarantula spiders. Now, this Selena is very open. They don't have walls in um, <laughs> in the main parts of the hostel. Yeah, your, your, room does. your room does. But yeah, they're all kind of huts. And so we were sitting in the outdoor cinema, just me and Nick watching Netflix. And these American girls came in and they were like, oh my God, that is so cute. There's some tarantulas over there. I was like, are you kidding me? First off, they're not cute. Don't try and act hard here. Secondly, where is it? Because we were sitting on the sofas. It was about a meter away from us, freely walking around. It wasn't a pet. It was just genuinely from the Amazon rainforest. Scared the hell out of us. So we didn't sit in the cinema room anymore, did Let's we? Let's leave. We're off. We're leaving this country. Yeah, it was not nice seeing it, but nothing's really going to happen. And the local staff, you know, they'll they'll see it and just pick it up and throw it away. Like, it's no big deal, of course. That They grow up with it. Not throw it away like in the bin. They just put it no, no. back into back the forest in the away from us. Yeah. And just, just to be clear as well, yeah, they do bite. So I wouldn't pick it up. Like, don't disturb it. But it's not poisonous. So you're not going to die. It will just apparently really, really hurt. So, yeah, be careful still. That is true. But, yeah, like Amy said... There's uh, two places he went to, Tenna, more of a big city. There's more there, you know, more big hotels, I guess more for tourists and you can arrange a tour from there. But if you want a bit more of a jungle experience, then you can stay in Misa Hawaii, proper good, Kichwa, that local village, both amazing places. And we had an incredible, amazing time in the Amazon, but that's giving you a good taste and giving you some information about if you want to see the Amazon, which you can easily do in Ecuador. I loved it, but I was glad to leave. <laughs> I felt the same. Next destination of our Ecuadorian adventure was Quito, the capital city. (laughs) 
Now, this felt, for me, one of the most dangerous places we went in South America. But that's because I felt incredibly safe in South America. I love it. I always tell people to be aware, but, you know, don't. it wouldn't stop you from doing anything. But Quito felt different. You know, walking through the historic centre, you're extra aware of who's around you. They have a big homeless problem there. Lots of homeless people. And so that doesn't give it much of a, a, a friendly vibe, if you will. So, yeah, there were times where we were eating on the street and, yeah, you'd have a lot of people coming up asking for food, which is fine, you know, at least... I think it's better that they're asking for food rather than money Taking. and yeah, stealing or asking for money and I don't know. The other reason why we probably think it's more dangerous than others is because we were kind of involved with the aftermath of an incident. So we were working in our hostel and a girl ran in, an American woman, and she shouted in Spanish, quick, call the police, I've just been attacked by two men with a knife. And so I understood what what she said, obviously, and ran over to her and said, oh my God, are you okay? What's happened? And she said that the two men went near her and she had a bag over her shoulder, crossing her body, and they used the knife to cut it off of her, cut the strap, and then they ran away. She could see blood on her because she had so much adrenaline go through her body. She didn't know if it was her blood or what, but it turns out it was their blood. I think they'd cut themselves in between, you know, trying to get the bag off of her. So because we had all of our equipment out and laptops, we couldn't put them away quick enough. I said to Nick, you go to the police station with her. Yeah, because she asked the lady at reception to phone the police and she, the lady at the reception wasn't bothered. She was like, oh, there's no point me phoning. There's a police station just down the road. Like you can go. And like she could have, well, we didn't know she might. She we thought she'd been attacked, you know, stabbed. So I went with her to the police station. Police didn't really care much. They just said, "What's your name? What's your address?" Blah blah blah. And she said, "Are you going to find the guys?" And they said, "It's unlikely." But I'm thinking, you know, like his blood is on her. That's DNA. They could do a bit more than what they did, but they weren't too bothered. And as we were leaving the police station, another tourist came in, a guy who'd been pickpocketed. And I know that happens all over the place. But it just seems like it's a very common thing there. We didn't get a good vibe from the city. I didn't think it was a particularly beautiful city at all, really. I think that goes for both the big cities you're into in Ecuador. Countryside, amazing, safe, cheap, lovely. The two big cities, I'd just say fly in and fly out. Do you think? Yeah, I don't think there's much around Quito. The thing that makes it special is 20 minutes away from Quito or towards the outside is mitad del mundo which is the centre of the earth. Yeah, this was good. Yeah, so this is where the equator actually goes through Ecuador. You can go to the same place that's on the northern and the southern hemisphere at the same time. You can get some cool pictures. And yeah, I'd say that's the main reason why you'd go to Quito. Yeah, only $5 to enter this. It's more than a museum. It's like a village full of different museums. So there's a museum dedicated to the equator where you can learn some fun facts. There's a beer museum coffee and chocolate museum gift shop and even a planetarium there's stuff to do that all day long and it's more aimed at kids because it's like fun interactive stuff but we had fun as well and for five dollars you can't go wrong but interestingly where the yellow line is painted where you have your cool pictures now thanks to modern technology we know that it's wrong (laughs) i think it's like 200 meters wrong i think the exact line is somewhere else but it's a cool picture it is really cool and I remember when we first got to the ticket booth where we had to buy tickets to enter and they're like oh it's five dollars each and I remember being so shocked because and this just shows how cheap Ecuador is I was like five dollars are you kidding just to go near a line I couldn't believe it but then once we got inside I should have learned really that I think Ecuador is really good at pricing their activities so you know, that swing we were talking about, Casa de Arbol, if that's $2, then I was thinking, if this is $5, it needs to be offering way more than that. And I just didn't think it was going to, but it did in the end. We were there for most of the day. It was really interesting. And if you go to the center of the world monument that's in the middle you can actually go inside it and the whole part of it is a museum is very interactive you know you press in buttons and it gives you more information and there's a science part of it where you can move the sun and it shows you what it does you know all these different things and it's really really interesting I'd recommend that for sure I think if you're going to Quito and you want to do mitad del mundo which means the center of the earth then you've got I'd say you need like two to three days max. Yeah, no more. 
yeah, like Nick said, I think the countryside and the mountains is what you want to go to Ecuador for. The cities, maybe not so much. But we were lucky because we were couch surfing with a very nice man called Fausto. We got to spend time with him and his son. And where he lived was actually right in like the north tip of Quito. And that is where the Mital del Mundo, center of the world or middle of the world museum is. So we actually walked there from his house, which is very lucky. It then meant getting buses into Quito was a lot because Quito's strange. Where a lot of cities are kind of a circle shape, it's a very long, thin line because it's in between all the mountains, I guess. So to get from north to south could take you like three hours, but to get from east to west could be a lot quicker. It's just a very strange shaped city and it can take a very long time. So we stayed with him right at the north near the center of the world. Had a great time with him. He took took us to like restaurants and bars and stuff. We learned from him about his country. Then we got a bus into the city center and we stayed there for a few days to explore the city center, which then we wish we didn't. Yeah, not so much a great place. (laughs) But let's hear from Fausto now, the guy that we couch surf with. He explained to us the meaning of Quito. Todos provienen de distintas, de distintas lenguas de los indígenas, sobre todo de Quichua. Hay dos significados. Oh, okay. So it's all based around Quichua, the language. Uno de ellos proviene del idioma Safiki. Safiki hablan los indígenas de Santo Domingo de los Colorados. Okay, so Safiki is the name of this indigenous language? A language. Yeah. Safiki is a language Mm -hmm. from Santo Domingo de los Colorados. So that's the name of the city that it comes from. Is Kitsa. Kitsa. Q-U-I-T-S-A. Kitsa significa mitad. That word there, Kitsa, that means the middle. Y to, T-O, significa mundo. And T-O means world. That makes sense. This is the middle of the world. Yeah. In the other... <laughs> English. He wants to speak English. Yeah. <laughs> the English is now coming out. No, yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, la otra is only K y la I. K y. Que es Ki. En otra lengua quichua. De la región de Cotopaxi. So this is from the region Cotopaxi, and uh, it's spelt K-I. Eso significa eh, tomar. So that signifies to take. And Teo significa tierra. And the Teo part of the Quito means uh, land. So to take the land, Quito. Thank you, Fausto. We did have a very, very good time staying with you. All right, we moved on to the last part of our trip in Ecuador. We did a lot, if you include Galapagos as well. My God, we did a lot. We got a bus to a place called Latacunga because nearby we wanted to see Kilatoa, which is a collapsed volcano. It's now got water in it. It looks quite spectacular. It looks like a crater. I thought it was where the meteor hit the earth that (laughs) made the dinosaurs extinct, (laughs) but it's not. Apparently that's like half of Mexico. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Apparently that happened in Mexico. But the whole time, I think we said it on camera. Hint, hint. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yeah, I think we were saying on camera, like, oh, this is where the dinosaurs died. (laughs) And no, it didn't. Not at all. It looks amazing, though, doesn't it? You can get some great pictures. It's spectacular. It is really beautiful. So that's called the Kilatoa Crater. And you can do something called the Kilatoa Loop. And that would take around three to four days. This is a great place for you hikers, you walkers out there, anyone that wants to get out into nature. And you can do the loop by yourself. You don't need a guide. There are guides possible. Like It is possible to hire them. And that might be a good idea because I think it's quite difficult because it's so quiet there for tourism. It's quite new. There aren't that many places to stay, not a lot of accommodation. So you really do need to dig deep to get that research. We weren't interested in doing the loop. Plus, we didn't have much time because it was quite cold there at this point, wasn't it, in the highlands? Yeah, yeah, we are high up. Yeah, we're near the equator. So you think it'll be hot, but 
high altitude. It was cold. It was cold. So when you do the Kilatoa loop, you can either start or end at this crater, or you can just do the crater by yourself, like just that, not any of the other walking, which is what we did. And you can get a bus there. Again, it's super easy, nice and cheap to get the bus. I think it took around two hours from Latacunga, where we were staying, which is quite a big city. And yeah, you can get the bus there two hours, and then you walk to the crater. You can like go down down into the crater you can walk all the way down which takes i'd say about 40 minutes to go down yeah. and then about an hour and a quarter to come up yep definitely and at the bottom on the water you can rent boats you can go kayaking yeah lots of little activities there's some wild dogs there as well who are super cute they like followed us around obviously just wanting food but we were giving them so much attention i just fell in love with those dogs so the way we did it was nice and cheap again, better than paying like $50 for a tour. But because we were staying in Latacunga, it's like the nearest big town really with hotel options, it wasn't the cheapest and not a nice place at all. It's not a very nice place. It was just because it's all we could afford near Kilatoa. It's cold there, not a nice town. You're not selling it really. <laughs> I'm not trying to sell it, but it was useful because it was somewhere to stay. And then, yeah, a bus journey to Kilatoa. So we saved a lot of money. But also nearby is Cotopaxi Volcano, which is quite famous. I believe it's over 5,000 metres tall, like from sea level. Is it the highest volcano in South America? No, it's actually the second highest in Ecuador. It's not even the highest in Ecuador. Oh, right. But when you get to the top, Google a picture. It's amazing. You can see the volcano crater all covered in snow because it's sub-zero temperatures that high up. You need a guide. It's expensive to get to the top and a lot of hard work. So although we could see the volcano from Latacunga, we didn't go up it. We just couldn't afford it and didn't really want to. We're not really volcano climbers, are we? It, I saw a lot of pictures of people on Facebook groups of Ecuador and they were showing them with ice picks on, crampons on their shoes. It's a really serious volcano. I And I read that a lot of people couldn't make it to the top. It's a really strenuous activity. So I think if you've done this sort of thing before, then you'll know what you're doing and probably make it to the top. But it's not, don't just think that you can turn up and do it and it'll be easy because it's, it's quite a challenge. Yeah, but that just shows again, there is something for everyone in Ecuador. If you're a proper extreme outdoor person, you'll love it. If you just want to chill or party, you'll love it. Yeah, brilliant place. So as we've described in all the places that we've been in this journey of Ecuador is, yeah, there's stuff for surfers, people that like being on the coast, the highlands, in the Amazon rainforest with all the tarantulas. Like there's so much to do. We've spoken about budget. We've spoken about food, ornado and yapincacho, their languages, Quechua and Spanish. It really is a brilliant country. It was actually our second favourite country in South America after Brazil. Yeah, and I'd still stand by that out of all of our trip. It was definitely, well, definitely in my top five places on this trip. And we went to 19 countries, so very and highly regarded. When you speak to people who say, I've travelled South America, that normally means they've done like Peru, Bolivia, Chile. For three weeks. Maybe Argentina. Yeah. yeah. But a lot of people from Peru to Colombia, they'll go straight from Peru to Colombia. And a lot of people miss Ecuador. And I think that's because they go, oh, it's just small. It's like small country. I don't need to bother. It packs a punch, though, doesn't it? Yeah, it was our favourite out of all the ones I've just mentioned. That was our favourite. Definitely. So this is coming to the end of the episode. You probably know what this is going to be, right? We need to mark Ecuador out of 10. We have our three categories as normal, culture, price and nature. So out of 10 for culture, what would you give it? I okay. get Eight out of ten. We said it's got a mix of all different South American cultures. Nothing really slaps me in the face. And that's what I want. I want a good culture slap when I go to a country. Okay. So eight out of ten. Wow. I'd give it a nine out of ten. I think it's brilliant. You've got the Quechua people, all the other tribes as well. You've got the Amazon rainforest. Like we said, cities, coasts. You've got the Galapagos. Oh, my goodness. Definitely a strong nine out of ten. For culture, yeah? Yeah. Because you just mentioned loads of nature stuff. Amazon, Galapagos. Okay, food. <laughs> you know, yeah. the cities like Cuenca, absolutely beautiful. All right. Okay, price out of 10, I'll go first. 10. 10. Like, it couldn't get any better. You can do canyoning for $15. Oh, my goodness. And it's so safe. It's not like low on price, low on safety. It's oh, brilliant. 100% price is 10. No doubt about that. And nature? I would say... 
You've got to be 9.5 out of 10. Oh, you did want to go for the 10. I, only because I think there are better places like Galapagos. It's part and of Ecuador. Also places, yeah, it is. But also places like Nepal and... Yeah, I just think there are better places for nature, but it is a strong 9.5 out of 10. Are you going for 10 there? That is strong. Yeah, I'll go for 10 because like we said earlier, beach, mountain, rainforest, Galapagos. What more do you want? So what did I give it? I went 8, 10, 10. And I did 9, 10, 9.5. It's pretty good. Very high scores for Ecuador there. So please message us if you've been and agree with us or disagree with us. Do you hate Ecuador? If so, we hate you. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but yeah, let us know. And are you going there soon? Because we'd love to hear your experience of it. Next episode on what the Faux Travel Podcast will be. It'll be our third and final long-term travel episode focusing on life back home. How's it going? I'll give you a little heads up. It sucks. <laughs> it's depressing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be talking about you know our trip, things we regret, things we do differently, blah, 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 blah. So we'll round up our whole round the world trip on our next mini episode. And if you haven't heard the first two installments of that, they're live on the podcast now, wherever you get your podcasts from, iTunes, Spotify, from our website, from Audio Boom, then go take a listen to those. It might encourage you to do the same, you know, quit your job, sell everything and go traveling. It's the best year we've had. So I'd highly recommend it. But yeah, that's long term episode coming next. Don't forget you can support us on Patreon, YouTube, T-shirts, you know, we've got merchandise, iTunes reviews, all of that. We'd very much appreciate it. See you soon. Don't forget you can get in touch with the show. You can email us at whatthefoepodcast at gmail.com. We are also on all the social medias, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we are also on Patreon. For more information on all those things, you can go to our website at www.whatthefoetravelpodcast.com. 